Um, it's a truism to say you've got to see the works themselves, but I think with Hopper it's, it's especially the case because his work is so well known by so many people through reproduction, both you know, legitimate and even caricatures. And what I've taken away from this exhibition, and I've known his work all my life, and I've seen Cerny's, is just how beautiful these paintings and watercolors are. They really are. They're powerful images you know, in their own right as images, but they also, as, as works of art, are just, just really wonderful. And I think I'd love to see people leave with the same kind of feeling. Obviously, throughout his career, light is, is, is just essential in his black and white etchings and the watercolors and the paintings. And when he said, I'm after me, and you see that painting of light, I don't know, that just seems to be, I, I've been asked today uh, about, you know, you know, somebody said, well, he really liked windows, didn't he? And I said, yeah, I think he liked light, and windows get let in light, or they let you look in and see, you know. I mean, there, there are questions where you wonder, you know, what is the woman in Western Motel? She's just in this room. She seems to be by herself. She's looking at us. You know, the question is almost not sort of so much what's going on is what are we supposed to make of this, you know? I think that's deliberate on, on Hopper's part. I mean, he sets up that kind of situation so often. And again, that starts these sort of possibilities unfolding. Uh, but again, because there is no answer, that keeps them endlessly interesting. And this is, I think, one of the most amazing things about Hopper is that he can set these possible narratives kind of rolling in our minds, but there's never any sort of pat ending or specific way. And that keeps the, the, that possibility of meaning open. And I think that's what makes his paintings really timeless. I mean, these are paintings from the first half of the 20th century. It's a long time ago now, and yet they still seem kind of modern and, and uh, very much part of our experience. First of all, he chose places that don't seem, you know, even though that, yes, that's old architecture, the Victorian house or the shop fronts, but they're not specific in the sense of, you know, you see his New York, but you don't see the Empire State Building or something that locates it as, you know, both time and place. And in fact, some of these scenes could be anywhere. They could, they could be, you know, a city in the South, in the Midwest, in the, in the West Coast. And again, that keeps them from being, being dated. They're not, they're not tied in that specific way to some, some place and time. <laughs> 